This video will demonstrate how SnapGene can be used to simulate standard restriction cloning. Let's start with a simple example. I have a plasmid called p 67 egfp in which the gene for enhanced GFP, EGFP, is fused downstream of a portion of the yeast sex 7 gene. My goal is to replace EGFP with a gene encoding the red fluorescent protein, M-cherry. The sites I'll use for the cloning are BAMH1, here, and EAG1, down here. I'll select the fragment to be replaced by clicking on BAMH1 and then shift-clicking on EAG1. Now I'll open the cloning window. The command is in the Actions menu and it's called Insert Fragment. A window opens to show an embedded view of the p 7 EGFP plasmid. At the bottom of this window is an overview of my cloning strategy. So far, only the vector is visible with the sticky ends created by cutting with the two enzymes. At the upper right are controls for selecting enzymes. My two enzymes, BAMH1 and EAG1, are already listed here. If I needed to blunt one or both of the sticky ends, I could use these checkboxes. But for this cloning, I'll keep the sticky ends. Below the enzyme controls is a list of the fragments generated by cutting with these enzymes. The selected fragment is the one that will be replaced. If I look back at the map, I see that the fragment to be replaced is indicated in white and the remaining vector fragment is in black. Now I need to choose my insert, so I'll click up here on the Insert tab. To choose the plasmid that will be the source of the insert, I'll use this menu control to see the open DNA files. The plasmid I want is PM Cherry N1. When I choose this plasmid, the map appears. The M Cherry plasmid has a BAMH1 site here that I can use, but it doesn't have a downstream EAG1 site. Instead, I'll use this NOT1 site at the end of the M Cherry gene, because I know that NOT1 is compatible with EAG1. Okay, let's proceed with the cloning. To choose the enzyme sites, I'll type BAMH1 in the first entry box and NOT1 in the second entry box. Now the fragment I want is selected and is colored red in the map. If we look at the overview at the bottom of the window, we see that the sticky ends are indeed compatible and that the BAMH1 and EAG1 sites will be regenerated in the product. To complete the cloning, I'll click here at the lower right and enter a name. I'll call this plasmid p 7 m cherry To preview the product, I'll click on the Product tab. It shows m cherry fused to the SEC7 fragment as expected. Now when I press Clone, I generate the product. Clicking on the History tab shows the operation that I just performed with the same colors that were used in the cloning window. If I click on the Map tab, I can press this button in the side toolbar to turn on those same history colors. When I switch to Sequence View and scroll down, the history colors show me exactly where the insertion occurred. Okay, that was the slow way to simulate this simple cloning. Let me demonstrate a shortcut. First, I'll close and discard this file for the cloned product. That cloning was a cut-and-paste operation in which I pasted the m cherry gene to replace the EGFP gene. Now let's follow that logic by cutting and pasting as you would do in a word processing program. First, I'll switch to the window for the m cherry plasmid. The fragment I want to insert is the BAMH1 NOT1 fragment containing m cherry, so I'll click on BAMH1, then hold down the mouse button and drag to NOT1. Now I'll copy that fragment by pressing the Copy button in the top toolbar. Now I'll switch to the p 7 EGFP window. The BAMH1 EAG1 fragment that I want to replace is still selected, so I'll replace it by pressing the Paste button. That copy-paste operation automatically opened the Insert Fragment window and populated it with the fragments I want to clone. All I need to do is type the name of the product p 7 m cherry and press return, and I have my cloned product just as before. Now let's close these windows and turn to a more complex three-way cloning. The basic approach is very similar. 
This time, I'll use the Insert Two Fragments command in the Actions menu. Once again, I see a tabbed window, but with an extra tab because there will be two inserts. I will use this menu to choose the vector YIPLAC 204 tc which is a yeast plasmid that contains a multicloning site here in pink between a promoter and a transcription terminator. I want to insert the entire SEC7 gene followed by the EGFP gene. Both genes will be in the reverse orientation because the promoter is on the bottom strand. The cloning will be between the XBA1 and KPN1 sites in the vector, so I'll click on XBA1, then shift click to select KPN1. Now I'll click on the Insert 1 tab and then choose PEGFP1 as the source of Insert 1. I want to use this XBA1 site in PEGFP1 for the cloning, but there's a problem because the XBA1 site is blocked by dam methylation, as indicated by this asterisk and the gray color. SnapGene is making sure that I won't try an impossible digestion. To make the XBA1 site available for cloning, I'll pull up the window for PEGFP1. When I click on the XBA1 site, it gives me an option to change the methylation. I'll choose the dam minus strain SCS110. When I press OK, the XBA1 site is now active. Now when I switch back to the cloning window, I can click to select that XBA1 site, then drag upward to select the BAMH1 XBA1 fragment containing EGFP. Now I'll click on the Insert 2 tab and then choose a plasmid called PSEC7KB, which contains the SEC7 gene flanked by KPN1 and BAMH1 sites. I'll click on KPN1, then shift click on BAMH1 to select the SEC7 gene. Now I have my cut vector and my two inserts, but as shown in the overview at the bottom, I don't yet have a product because the inserts are facing the wrong way. So I click these buttons in the overview to flip both of the inserts. Now I have a complete product. I can preview the cloned product in the Product tab. I'll click here to give it a name. YIPLAC 204 tc sec 7 egfp when I press Clone, my final product appears. Again, I can click on the History tab to see the steps in the procedure, including changing the methylation of PEGFP1. This tutorial has illustrated how SnapGene can simulate restriction cloning while helping you to visualize every aspect of the process, including error prevention. In these examples, I, as the researcher, knew what I wanted to do, and SnapGene helped me to get there quickly. But the restriction cloning controls are equally useful when you want to design a new cloning strategy. Thanks for your attention.